We have a special guest today, Pastor Rob Covell. Hey, thank you. Pastor uh, of the Refuge Church. Used to be called the Refuge, Refuge House of Prayer. Re Refuge House of Prayer. Yeah, now it's and called so, the Refuge Community. So I think I met you first when you started that, or when you basically kind of took it over and saved That's it, right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, how, when, what was that event? How did we meet? I think we met here. Was it at here? At Granite Creek. Yeah, we met uh, through Steve Chua. Okay. And the uh, Randy Clark event. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Steve Chua is responsible for and us getting together, yeah. too, because right? I met you during, uh, during one of the Tuesday prayers. Yes. And then we connected again at Sanctuary Coffee at the Gold Place. Yes. And we started visiting, and and yeah. it's lovely. Oh, it's it's been fun. Yeah, we've all yeah. had, you know, uh, had our seasons of you know coronavirus crazy, and but uh, I'm really thankful to be here. I That's was, fun. Yeah, I'm looking, looking forward, forward to the all experience. Right. So, so. You took a house of prayer and then you made it into a real church. <laughs> so yeah. it's, like a, yeah. it's like Pinocchio becoming a real boy, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, and that it, took a lot of work. It, it did. And it took a is creative... It a, is it a real church or a conventional church? The house of prayer? Or well... It depends on who you ask. I would say... But I would say house of prayer is as much church as... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's a that's a... It's a debate, right? Yeah, is, it, yeah. is it a parachurch or is it a church? Yeah. So here's my, I mean, we can all commiserate on this thing because the parachurch is notorious for fundraising us, right? Yes. So I once had a parachurch person fundraising me um, and there was no, there was no uh, relationship being pitched. It was just like, you know, hey, would you give me some money? And yeah. so there was no, and I don't really, I don't, I don't go into financial relationships with other ministries unless it is a mutual give and take type of a thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not that yeah. like you're giving yeah. me money or anything, but there has to be, there has to be a relationship with the organization somehow. Yeah. Either they come here and they speak or preach or give testimony to what they're doing, but like the whole free check thing now. Um, but yeah, I, I once had somebody fundraising me, and uh, I'm like, so what are you? Are you a church, or are you, are you a parachurch? <laughs> that's, all, that's kind of a jerk on this. And he's like, well, we're a church. And I'm like, all right, well, then your congregation should be supporting you. And that didn't go over too well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a tough thing, because I, I see... And, and I don't mind supporting parachurch ministries. We do it all the time. I'm actually doing it right now. There's, uh, we're hosting somebody up in Arrowhead, and uh, it's just, it's just what we do. But again, it, it does go both ways. So you took a parachurch and you made it a real church. That's correct. And I know that wasn't an easy shift. It was not an easy transition, right? And it probably looks nothing like it once did, right? Or is it? Yeah, absolutely not. It's it's a regular church. Yeah. I mean, part of it is my love for the church too. Yeah. Um, the house of prayer is great, but um, in my experience, it made uh, other pastors in our city weary or leery or apprehensive to have any kind of relationship. Um, the other thing about House of Prayer is that uh, you miss all the opportunities to really minister to people. You're not baptizing, you're not right. marrying, you're mm, not doing life funerals. with people. That, that yeah. uh, community revolves around a spiritual experience, yeah. not around um, community. community. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, And I do love the church. I went to a great church planting school, I went to the Southern Baptist Church planting school. They do, they do it good. We yeah. do it well. Yeah, there's no question about that. Absolutely. I was telling Joel a while back. I had, I had like this jealousy and disdain for Baptist folks <laughs> because you guys do it so well. Like you, you know, yeah, there, you there, just... there, there, there's things we do well, and yeah. there's things that um, we don't do well, mm -hmm. and um, flexibility. Yeah, mm, not so much. <laughs> yeah, but um, other things we do have. We do great, great potlucks yeah you do yeah absolutely yeah, yeah, the old the old joke is it says the joke is is that 
I'm trying to eat right, but I go to a Baptist church. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's so good. All right, so you took an organization that was, it was dead, right? Yeah. It was. Yeah. I mean, it, it was struggling. It, it was, was about 20 people. Yeah. And then and, we uh, reformed a brand new 501c3, redefined the ministry, put some elders on board, yeah. began to associate with other church networks. And then we were able to grow in the long game. We yeah. just played the long game, you know, yeah. good worship, good teaching, good community. Those all grow churches. Yeah. Church growth isn't, isn't, uh, it, you know, it's not rocket science. It's, it's good worship, good teaching, great community. Those yeah. three building blocks yeah. will grow your church over the long run. In fact, the pastors I admire the most are the guys that, that don't quit. Yeah. They're guys that are hanging 20 years, great. 35 years. Those are the guys I admire. And those are the guys that usually leave behind a beautiful legacy of spiritual sons yeah. and daughters. I'd like to do that. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I'm in yeah, it for I'll the long that haul. Too. Yeah. yeah, I'll take that too. But yeah. Because the truth is that we all want to quit. At some point, every Monday, every Monday, you want to quit, right? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm really interested in is, you know, this is you know the whole Romans four thing. You yeah. took something dead, yeah, revived it, yeah, and then you created something that did not exist. Yes. And that's what I'm interested in. Okay. Is creating something that has not yet existed, and that's what God wants to invite us into. Yeah. So. Tell me about the creative process in leading a church. And, okay, so not only are you a pastor, you're a rock and roller, right? <laughs> so you're yeah. a musician. Yeah. And, and an Play artist. Play five instruments? Four. Four, Four instruments. instruments. Uh -huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. And, and this is unique, too, by the way. So you're, you're, a, you're a musician and an artist, painter. And you're a leader and a highly administrative skill and administrative gift. Yeah. Where does that come from? I don't know many people. Well, he's like an you. author as well. Oh, that's right. You yeah, wrote some I books just, and stuff. You wrote six wrote books. That's my right. Sixth, my sixth book, it's called Fivefold Females. And it's an apologetic on female leadership. That's awesome. It's a beautiful little book. It'll be out. The American Baptist weeks. in me is. My little spirit is just singing because because we are very strong on um, on women in ministry That's and so leadership. Cool. I yeah. I think for the evangelical church in America to survive, we have to address the elephant in the room, which is egalitarianism. Yeah, Preach. that's uh, preach. Yeah, that's it's different. I don't want to say it's different for me. I mean, I do see like that's I, I witness it in my own ministry church right this is because it's you know we're guys right and we're strong leaders at times um i was kind of uh shocked at the sexism in churches when i started dipping my feet into other denominations and other traditions because mm -hmm. i come from a pentecostal tradition yeah. my grandfather sat under amy simple mcpherson we've mm -hmm. always had women preaching in our church mm -hmm. yeah uh we licensed and ordained women. It's just yeah. been a part of my Assembly of God tradition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, what? Like, it was just, it was surprising when I thought, like, I didn't even bother reading the scripture about the stuff that was so controversial. And so, anyway, that's that's been my okay. take on women. I was like, what? Yeah, this I, is... I think to convert the wider, yeah, and invite the wider realm of evangelicalism, you know, conservatively, the, when you lose Beth Moore, that's what I was. I, was I mean, her up something next, yeah. is really wrong. Like she's something theologically conservative. Absolutely. She's yeah. a great Bible teacher. I mean, I love her stuff. I've read her books. That was when heartbreaking. When you lose her, that was heartbreaking. Something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. And and she stuck it out for such a long time. She did. And she would always say, "This is my church." Yes. And therefore, I need to. You know, I might not agree with it, but I'm going to stick it out. So she was in the long. She was in the long game with them long. too, and it was heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah and people still crap on her. I don't understand that. Yeah. She's amazing. Yes, she is. So, oh, I, I ab absolutely agree. I, I, there's a story she told, and I'm not going to tell it, but to this day, I think about it, and it just makes me cry. And gentle, how gentle and gracious oh. 
and how honest she is. Yeah, yeah I, you know? I really appreciated her. And yeah. so this book is really written to the skeptic. Mm. It's written to two Thank audiences. The you. first audience is people like us that may get some minor criticism yeah. or we might have some women in church like here's an apologetic yeah. i take on all the problem passages we break it all down here you go here's all the information you know to get educated on why it's biblical to ordain women yeah. and part, have them fully participate in ministry and then uh and then it's it's written to the the people that want to go there yeah. yeah you know the skeptic and the people that are already there so it's awesome yeah it'll be out soon I do have to. I mean, church is such a weird thing because it is, in essence, ran by boys, at least from the top up. But everything else is ran by the, the gals, right? The heartbeat of the church, I mean, absolutely, is the ladies. Absolutely, and they just. It almost seems like they pretend to think, let us think that we're in leadership. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I always uh, uh, yeah. call my wife. Yeah. We let you preach. <laughs> yeah. But I have to be, and I'll, I'll say this on Sunday, I was like, oh my gosh, we are so boy heavy on the platform today. So I have to be intentional about mm -hmm. having a female voice and a presence on the platform. Yeah, I have to be. Because yeah. it's just, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just on my personality or just the way that things are, things are structured, but if I'm not saying, okay, so-and-so is going to lead ministry time, so-and-so is going to do announcements, so-and-so is going to preach, like if I don't do that, it doesn't seem like it happens. Yeah. yeah. So, then, yeah, I don't want to be an egalitarian. Yeah. I want the church to survive, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think you're right. I know you're right. Over half of our audience is, is gals, and yeah, you know, and we both have had this experience. We could be preaching, you know, a topical study that's absolutely amazing, and then a gal comes and preaches it the very next day, point by point, and they hear something completely different. Mm -hmm. They're like, "That was so amazing," and you we're like hurt because like I preached that last week. <laughs> Didn't you? Yeah, it's like okay, so they weren't. We we uh, we were intentional. Um, we have. Uh, equal amount of women on staff to men. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it keeps it interesting. Yeah, and then we rotate. Um, we do team teaching, and so we always have a female voice there. Mm. And uh, That's awesome. It's, but you're right, Pastor Josh. It's intentional. That's what you do. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's cool. So what are, what other creative things do you do? Well, and, and do you think it plays a part in how you lead? Oh, absolutely. Um, creativity for me uh, opens my mind up to God thoughts. Okay. Um, and, and I like to say my creativity is in like three expressions. The first expression is, you know, kind of the paint draw expression. Um, that's, that's a place for me of, um, of prayer, revelation, of just connecting with God through in the experience of art. Yeah. Um, the other one is playing my emotions. Like I always have an acoustic guitar somewhere in my proximity where I can oh just sit gosh, and you're just, a true musician. just play how I feel yeah. and just communicate through sound. And then the, the, the third expression of creativity is I love to write. I love philosophy. I write these, you know, essays that nobody reads, but they're, they're life giving to wow. me. And I post them on Facebook. And um, so all of those things for me, it's, I like to live as a creative and the creative process actually spurs action. Yeah. So that's how I like to say art is a place of revelation that moves me to faith action. Hmm. Hmm. As a, as a doer, as a, as a creator of art, but also as, a, as an observer of art, in answer to that, um, what you, that it motivates you? Yeah, I think, um, well, the human makeup, like we're so complex, uh -huh. right? There's so many manifold uh, facets to each one of our lives. We're uniquely us. There's, you know, there's not, your DNA isn't, it's, you're only one you, one, one Pastor Joel. There's only one yeah. Pastor Josh. There'll always only be one Pastor Josh. 
if we unraveled our DNA, right? You, right? Your song's different than my song and different than your song. So I think, you know, we're so complex, but um, creativity uh, is one of those things that make us un uniquely us. I, I, just, I just love what you just said. And when you were saying that out, when you were just saying that about our DNA, mm -hmm. I, 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 there was a celebration in my heart and that, that I, was, I was just briefly, I was celebrating Josh. I was celebrating yeah. you, and I was I was thankful that for God making me the way I am, and and at the same time there was a little bit of heartbreak because there's some people and some churches who are spending so much energy and so much time, and and it's time wasted trying to be like something else. Yeah. So true. Than they are. I, the, I think the question was directed at observing art. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I see the first thing I see in art is Imago Day. Yeah. When we walked into to your uh, our, your studio here, I was immediately drawn to this capital. I was touching it while we, and I'm like, man, somebody hundreds of years ago actually chiseled this. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you, this was a work of a skilled craftsman. And they'll, there'll only be one of these, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, it this... was not machine made. No. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I observe art, for me, I see Imago Day first, but also there's the experience of art. How does it make me feel? Um, what's my perception? Am I in awe or am I um, feeling emotion of love? Do I feel emotion of sadness? Yeah. Um, the only social media I do is Twitter. I follow a bunch of different people on Twitter, but I love to follow archaeologists mm. and people Likewise. that are kind of like art critics yeah. and things and art, other artists. And when I observe other people's art, sometimes you could feel on a Twitter scroll every emotion in the human heart yeah, yeah. as you scroll, right? If you yeah. just dial down. So your, your church worship services are very expressive too. That's correct. So it's not... I mean, it's uniquely you, it's uniquely Refuge, and it is very expressive. Yeah. And that, that was, it's on by design. And, yeah. and do you still do the prophetic paintings during worship? Uh, absolutely. We, we have painting every single <coughs> service, almost every single service. I mean, it's, it's a rare Sunday that goes by where yeah. we don't have somebody on stage creating while we're worshiping. And do you do that at times too? Um, not for no, the longest not, not time. For, I, I, for me, it's so hard on a Sunday. I, I like to slow create. Yeah. And I don't like... Do you to, say slow create? Uh-huh. Yeah, is, is that your language too? Uh, um, yes and no. I mean, I have, a, I, have, I have a couple of things on the easel right now that, that were started the beginning of yeah. the year. And, and still laboriously trying yeah. to get them done and um, but um, yeah I, I slow create I, I have everything set up in well, I have a little studio um, in my office I have a bigger office well it's actually my wife's office so I won't claim it as <laughs> mine but I have a, a place now my wife's a creative too so we have a creative space in our hmm. kind of space at church and um, we'll both have something started and yeah. we'll dabble. You know, I might get 15 minutes on it and go, okay. And then I've got to go to a meeting. And so I use art to decompress. I use it. Uh, That's cool. But just kind of slow create. And I, will, I kind of want the, exp I try to live the, exp for me, it's revelatory. Uh huh. So I just want to be in the experience of it for, to paint on a Sunday morning on worship. Yeah. I'm watching the clock. I'm like, okay, I've got to. It's got to kind of look like something, because it would be like, what is that prophetic yeah, block? I see. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm really interested in. Yeah. And you guys do dance too, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Joel and I have this kind of ongoing conversation, and we are confessing our weaknesses and being snobs. Okay. So the Lord is working on us. For I me. didn't think I was. And then I start yeah. hanging around with Josh. I'm so snobby. I'm, I'm, just like, such. 
<laughs> so um, yeah. we've we've had the conversation we'll about say cultured. Yeah, oh, <laughs> no, that's no, a no, 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 no. That's no, a thank you. It. It's no, it's it it's, it's snob. So <laughs> we've had the conversation about about interpretive dance and flags. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I just can't do it. Like, yeah. I just can't handle it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not that I don't like dance. I love dance. I just can't handle being forced to watch <laughs> dancing poorly. And so I yeah, appreciate yeah. you guys going there. And the same, yeah. is, the same is true with the, the prophetic art. I'm such a snob. Like, I just can't, I can't do it. We had some uh, evening services where we had these millennials coming in and they wanted to do prophetic painting. I'm like, all right. And they're doing it. It was so bad. I just I just couldn't stomach it. And then they're like, and I got myself in trouble too. As they paint it, I just let them do it, right? I let them paint during worship. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, like, and my, my skin's crawling. I'm like, okay, I got to pull it together. You know, it's not about you. <laughs> it's about Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, they're trying to express themselves. And then they wanted to hang it in the church after they were done with it. I'm yeah. like, no, he, 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 and they're like, "Well, why not, Pastor?" And I just, it just came out because I don't like it. It's not, it's not good. And, uh, so that's one reason why I don't do the interpretive. Because it brings it out your humanity it, too much. My yeah, whatever, whatever that is. I mean. But <laughs> well, I did I, have Hyatt Moore paint live. He did this painting here. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. beautiful. Um, yeah. He did that live in our church. He yeah. did a couple of other he wow. did portrait live. And so I could appreciate that, but I mean, it's just a different. Ca- I mean, it's a different caliber of artist. And, yeah, I think you have to pastor the arts. You, yeah. you know, one thing is uh, everybody um, creates at a different level, and you can always get better. Um, art is one of the skills that you can hone through practice, yeah. through um, even painting with other artists or being the proximity of other artists, and when you can find. A person to champion yeah. that expression. Well, now you can father it, right? Yeah, if yeah. you have somebody that's not that great, you say, "Okay, like, look, before you even get the platform, like, you create in this space." So yeah. we have several different ways to get to the platform. One of the ways is we just have a, a creative area in our church. We have three art tables. For real, it's fully stocked, and there'll be everybody there from a senior citizen to a little kid. And we just say, you create. And I don't, like, I don't care what it looks like. Yeah. Just create. This is a creative mm-hmm. space. And then uh, when you see people consistently creating, well, then you have other artists within your church that begin to uh, mentor the art. You begin to um, create community around the art. And um, pre-COVID, we had a really, really strong uh, art community. Now mm. we're kind of living on the hangover. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, you know, because... With everything else. Yeah, right? there was yeah. just so many things that changed. and. Yeah. But uh, that was one thing that was healthy for us is because I could take an artist that I was like, mm, you're not that good. And even some of my stuff, it's like, man, that could be so much better. Yeah. But I had a professional artist that was like speaking into my life and going, hey, if you use a brush like this, yeah. you do this. Yeah. If you do this technique, hey, maybe if you... Um, yeah. So uh, we created fathering and mothering around it and that helped. That's awesome. I think, I think Proverbs 27 puts it. Great. Let others praise you, not yourself. Yeah. And so I think in an answer to those who feel that they have something there, for them to just thank you. This yeah. is what you've done. And then let others, it would have been really neat if you would have said, if we said to our prophetic artists, I want to I wanna display this. Yeah. And it comes from another source instead of themselves. Yeah, that was the expectation that was projected onto you. It was yeah. like, hey, yeah. I'm... Yeah. This is amazing, and you're going to like it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the same as giving well, and then art you can as, create, as a then, gift. Then, then you can also create um, collaboratives, right? This is mm-hmm. one thing that, um, that we've done well, I believe, mm-hmm. is we've created themed painting. So yeah. we say, okay, we're, we were, our next thing is we're going to paint some icons. Everybody paints an icon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, some some are going to be better than others. Some are going to be amazing. Yeah. Some aren't. But um, but when you have a group, a collective show, that's awesome. You can have a really terrible piece from a five year old. Yeah. 
um, next to a very professional piece. Yeah, absolutely. And you can just uh, put that up and people get it. They're like, okay, the, the quality is not good here, but I understand the concept. I see yeah. the heart behind the art. But then I also have a very piece of fine art here that I can gaze at. That's awesome. And then yeah. I can begin to have a, the, the experience of contrast. I like that. Well, speaking of fine art, I'm, yeah. I'm anxious to see some of yours. Oh. Some of your creative, let's, if that's let's okay. Do, let's yeah, do yeah, it. Let's, let's do show that. it. That'd be fun. Yeah. All right. Now, so, um, so, nice. now tell us, tell us about this piece because this was I, in visiting with you and talking with you, I was fascinated by your influence, who you were influenced by, <laughs> and what you were influenced by, and it's just, I think it's a great story. It's Go a ahead. Very hippie looking painting here. Oh, that's great. Well, that is a piece of flash art from Sailor Jerry. Who is one of the most pro prolific American tattoo artists? Why don't you define what flash art is? Um, so that would be like on the wall of his tattoo shop. Got that it. was one of his famous pieces. He had kind of a crazy story. He was a merchant marine. Mm. He was uh, he taught himself how to tattoo by he'd shave dogs in Long Beach and <laughs> stick and poke dogs. <laughs> I mean, he invented the American That's expression so cool. of tattooing. His protege was it was Ed, is Ed Hardy. Okay. Um, this is the guy that was the first guy that tattooed with color. Wow. Um, he invented the reciprocating um, tattoo application gun. Mm. This guy, um, pretty much all of the American style tattoos that you see on people are all hit, inspired by him. That's cool. And so Sailor, Sailor Jerry um, was doing this in what years? Oh. Uh, he started in the 30s. The 30s. And wow. tattooed all the way up until the 70s. And oh, and that's another thing we need to mention about you. You've got a lot of tats. I do have a lot of tattoos. So, I, I love tattoos. Yes. I, um, my my wife your tolerates them. Um, your wife. What's your favorite? My favorite tattoo um, is probably my uh, traditional Japanese the sleeve. Koi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of hours that went into that, and my friend Lawrence did an amazing job on it, and we were just really bonded over getting needled over and over right. and over again. And all right, so just real quick, yeah, let's just do the let's just address the marking your body. Well, scripture is, from okay, um, don't mark your body for the, for the dead. dead. Yes. So, um, I think the what's the motivation? Yep. For me, it's it's twofold. One, it's cool, right? Right, right. So, and then there's um, then the art side of it. It's body art. Right. It's I've always been, and and I was sharing with Pastor Joel previously. I've always been kind of mm, a free, like kind of out there. I wasn't right. good at sports. I, you know, all I had was creativity that kind of made me a cool kid, or at least acceptable to the wider peer group. Yep. And um, being a punk rock kid in the 80s, you know, the, the, the coolest thing I could do would be in a punk rock band. Yeah. So that's, I just found my expression in counterculture and, and I've always been this way. I have tattoos that I could never show, mm -hmm. right? Um, just because they're not appropriate um, as a pastor, but yeah. they're part of my story, wow. you know, and... And I mean, I thought about, okay, maybe a cover-up or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, they're old, nasty tattoos, <laughs> punk rock you know, tattoos for the 80s. It kind of that's great. makes me ugly, yeah. right? Like, there's the But that's part. your story. Yeah, there's a part of us. I that's, love that's, that's what you like said. This not, is my story. There's my wife, you know, um, she grew up in a Christian home, loved Jesus from an early age. You know, my wife's an amazing person, and we were just not, we just probably wouldn't have never met outside of God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and she says, you know, they're beautiful to me because it's part of, like, who you were, and now I can see who you are. Mm -hmm. And so there's that aspect to it. And, I, you know, again, you know, it reminds me of that scripture, don't think too highly of yourself, right. you know, like, be aware of the grace that God's given yeah. you in the context of who you are. Yeah. And, we're all imperfect people re relying on grace. 
So you're really wearing the thorn in your flesh, literally, <laughs> yeah. almost. Yeah, I mean, I can't wear shorts, you know, yeah. to church or whatever. Yeah. Or, well, like on a work day yeah. at church, you know, I'm wearing pants. And yeah, like, yeah. I, Roasting. Yeah. But, it, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So do you think there is a point where marking your body for the dead would be a negative for some people? Well, to me, that implied, like... Well, the the word uh, in the Hebrew is actually engrave. Oh, really? Yeah, so it could mean everything from burning, cutting. cutting. It could be tattooing. It could be any kind of mark right. in memorial to something. And obviously bound up in pagan worship. Cultish. Yeah, it's a cult. And like, for me, I think sometimes when I look at, like, like this tattoo right yeah. here was, we, so a number of us all got the same tattoo because we all played on the same worship album together. That's sweet. So Which that, one was that? Uh, we put out a worship album called Lux Knox. Okay. It was all old hymns that we rewrote. And there's some tragedy behind it that I am not at liberty to share. Yeah. It was never released because of that tragedy. Uh, but, um, but, it, but it was a cathartic experience neat. for the people yeah. that were part of it. We all bonded. And then when we, we bonded around the all tragedy right. too, so. All right. The, the greater people didn't get to experience that. It gotcha. was one of the most amazing worship albums I've ever heard. We recorded really? it live. Really? You can't, you can't release it? Nope. That sucks. Nope. Interesting. Wow. Mm -mm. Okay. okay. We'll so hear it in heaven. Yeah, you'll hear it in heaven. It's right. definitely yeah. there. So you try to justify your tattoos, but how do you justify your short haircut? My short haircut? Yeah, because that's the very next line. You're not allowed to have your haircut oh, yeah. short, so... <laughs> Well, I think don't mark we, your de your body yeah, for the dead, I, and I, don't don't cut your hair close. I, you I think anyway. that uh, uh, Christians um, don't read the Bible with an understanding of progressive right. revelation. Ooh, ooh! ooh. Once, so we, once we go a, there, do you want to we go have, there? Well, yeah, because uh, for somebody like me, yeah, and I'm speaking for me, yeah, not for anybody here. Right. Uh, I'm a covenant theologian, yeah. So I see God unfolding. I see a very congruent, um, unified narrative of God starting with Eden lost to Eden restored. Yeah. And that's through a process of covenant. So God moved at certain times yeah. in humanity through humanity. And the new covenant is glorious because it's, it's the best deal that God's made with humanity ever, yeah. ever, yeah. ever, ever. And so when I look at the old covenant, it's fulfilled in Christ. Now, yeah. certainly God's moral law doesn't change, yeah. in my opinion. Some people um, can debate like, okay, yeah. morality has shifted because humanity's matured. We can have that discussion. But I'm, I'm very theologically conservative. Um, so I, I, I maintain God's moral law hasn't changed. But uh, in terms of the way God relates, now that Jesus Christ is crucified for sin and ascended to heaven... God is relating to humanity with, um, in the context of a loving father calling yeah. many sons and daughters. Amen. So what you're saying is that you eat shrimp and bacon. A absolutely. Okay. All right. Just, that makes sense. Cool. All right. Next piece. And let's see. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, that oh. piece. That, now, okay. So that's part of a series. Yeah. There are four more that will, that will be forthcoming. Oh. They're all faith themed. That's a, a faith themed painting, by the way. The, the peacock, peacock, yeah, was one of the original Christian symbols for eternal life. Oh, wow. And, and so that tattoo was inspired on that. Right? Yeah. Now, this is um, one of the things that you said is, um, is, is that I, because as an artist, um, I would say whatever gets the job done, you know, <laughs> when we need to, and it, yeah. you know, uh, we use our fingers, we use a brush. And so yeah. uh, to, you just have a simple cross Yep, and a very very simple palette. Yes, and so um, and then then you have this texture. Yeah. So um, just walk us through uh, a little bit of of how this came about. How did it start? Um, what what did you apply first, and what did you apply last? Um, that painting was part of a a, a community paint for Lent, uh, mm -hmm. my church, because we are basically spirit filled reform church. Um, the, like theologically, yeah, we're theologically, <laughs> theologically reform um, in terms of our systematic theology, but okay. we are egalitarian in terms of women in ministry, and we're spirit-filled church. 
So we're, we belong to a movement called the New Apostolic Reformation, which yeah. has those distinctives yeah. kind of blended. That one, uh, so we, we observe Lent, um, huh. and we do some light liturgy, and so we all decided we were going to paint through Lent and display that, and um, I thought a simple cross would capture the the sin condition in me. Mm, mm -hmm. I painted um, the, the rugged cross, mm -hmm. yeah. and I did it, I chose a very simple palette because I wanted it to be reflective. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted the piece to invite me in. Yeah, it does. To the to dream. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of the construction of it, I used, um, that's drywall mud. Yeah, awesome, okay. And I used cool. uh, a comb. Okay. Um, I spread it on the painting first, and then I painted it with um, titanium white, all of it in titanium white. Okay. And then I rubbed all the color. None of that's brush. Okay. That's all So rubbed. this is hands, hands on. Uh, this is hands on. I rubbed it all with a finger, a cloth, a Q-tip. Okay. Um, and Even the shadows around it? No, the shadow is actually a spray paint can. Oh, okay. I use spray paint um, to ghost the image. Yeah. And I tried to ghost the image imperfectly. Um, I, you know, you could look at it if you're a trained artist, like my wife looks at that and goes, man, it's a little light on this side. And I told her, you know, that's really on purpose. That's, that's because it's not supposed to be perfect. It's a, it's a simple piece of art that invites me into the broken condition. That's great. Because the broken condition, um, automatically um, connotes um, that we are imperfect. Yeah, we're broken vessels. We are broken, and I we're, and I like perestroika, that. Perestroika, you know, yeah. Paul said, you know, we're described us as yeah. as that. And there's there's wonkiness to it. But yes. we're all kind of uh, I walk wonky anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and I, you know, my walk with Christ is somewhat wonky as well. Mm -hmm. so that's great. I love that. And I love how that, how you describe that. Yeah. I, that's I neat, too. that process. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. That's let's dope. see some more of, of. So I did a series uh, called The Nail Wounds. Mm. Oh, and uh, so I, I decided to isolate every nail wound or every wound that Christ endured due in His passion. This was uh, another reflection. Me most of these were painted through COVID. Okay. Um, and so I was pieces? in a really dark place. I was just going to say that. So this looks a little dark, Rob. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. really in a dark place. Yeah, and, I had some of those too. And, but you're, not, you're supposed to be a Christian. Uh, well. And yeah, where's the, like the rainbows and the butterflies and the cream pastures <laughs> and the um, precious moment, little girl with your finger in her mouth? Right. Just <laughs> every cliche. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. Now, now, and you said these are there's a series okay. of these. Yeah, this is a series. So that's okay. the side wound. Yeah, I can see it. It's so cool. And so I, t I took. Uh, I, now they're big pieces. Those are really big. Oh, um, how big? What are we talking uh, about? I think uh, twenty. Two by no, twenty-seven by thirty. No, twenty-four by thirty-six. Standard canvas, or did you stretch them? Uh, they're standard canvas. Okay. I, I bought them, uh, you know, pre-made. Staples on the back. Or? Staples on the back. Cotton. <laughs> okay. And um, you know, but tight Nerds. cotton, watercolor. Yeah, cotton, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's what I use. Uh, okay. That's a that's acrylic, some kind of acrylic. Like the the first painting we looked at, is sharpie. Pencil, anything and everything. Everything that I could yeah. use to get what I wanted. Okay. And um, the, wow. So that one, this one, I painted at Christmas time, and uh, I just thought, you know, I wanted to capture something that um, caught the glory of Christ being born into the world, and then also that He was born mm. to die, mm. and just kind of seeing all these different shades to Christ. You know the black he put he put on sin. You know mm. he was born a real man, a perfect man who knew no sin but became sin. And the gold, the glory of the God. gold is the glory. Mm. Different epochs of time. Yeah, I put it on gray, um, and uh, that center bloodline is kind of like the hinge point of history. Is this is this also a COVID painting? 
this is a COVID painting. Okay. A lot so, of my COVID stuff is really just painted out of um, my emotions. Okay, so so a limited palette. Limited palette, and the other thing is like it, what, it wasn't that glorious, right? Mm. Of a Christmas like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, we're afraid um, to, you know, we're afraid to even like hang out with family yeah. and stuff, and okay. you know, I had to call my parents. Are you okay? Like, you know, like how do we navigate? Yeah. Tell, tell me about uh, tell me about the uh, um, the white. The oh, white oh, the application, white, the, uh, the splashes, the, the spots. Yeah, I'm like, you know, there's uh, purity. Okay. Little little bits of purity in, in a broken world. It's probably my f favorite part of the painting. The that white, that, that is my that favorite white, part like of that. the painting. Um, and again, this was um, big brush, big brush. Um, you know, I didn't use any small brushes. I used... Uh -huh. Big brushes. I ran my paint on purpose. Um, I, I uh, splattered. I, I just big long down strokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I bet that was fun. Um, it was. I created that. That was another long painting. I just looked at it and just would yeah dip it. Just but that's another big one. It feels very abstract expressionist. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, I there played is. with that during COVID. So is it do you like Rothko? Do you like Pollock? Because it looks like a Rothko yeah, in I, a way. I do. I've been playing. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, as an artist, I feel like I'm trying to continue to come into my identity as an artist uh, in a lot of ways. Like, okay, you see how like that Sailor Jerry painting was right. like very like hard line, defined line, right. you know, and then here you kind of cartoony color. And this, this one is just a straight, like, so this is, this is, you would say that, and the subsequent paintings and the one before that is you trying to find who you are as an artist. Yeah. You're, if this is finding your voice as an artist, that's correct. And, okay. and again, like painting for me is the, is the moment, the revelatory. Okay. Moment. Okay. So for me, this is like a quiet time. That's awesome. Are That's you good. ever going to go to market with your work? Um, I, you know, I have uh, one of my really close friends, Shane Grammer, is probably one of the most versatile artists I've ever met. Mm -hmm. I mean, he um, does huge installations. He's been contracted by Disney. He just did mm -hmm. a job for Google. He uh, painted the huge mural in my church with spray paint. That's all spray paint. Um, you know, Wait, can, the rattle the, can. The one that I like? Yeah, that's rattle can. Really? Yeah, believe it or not, that is a rattle can. Just, wow. I wish, mean, he looks... He, he, yeah, he does huge murals. He has a book coming out. Um, he painted all the paradise. Oh, we should get him on the show. Huh? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll get him next. Let's do that. He, Let's a, do that. He's a great guy. And uh, Shane has been... Um, given me permission to do things I should never do. Mm. He um, freed me, and he gave me the. I was always. I always thought I was kind of a free artist. Hey, I'll use my finger. I'll use mm -hmm. this. I'll use a sponge. I'll use a rag. I'll use, you know, a brush. I'll use a spray paint can. And he's just like, yeah, well, you know, why don't you paint out of the box? Mm. Why don't you get out of what you're used to creating, and just paint? And so. He gave me permission to explore. So I'm in the season of trying to That's find neat. one. And so he's really encouraged me to go to market. Um, he's like, hey, man. When you're saying go to market, sell it. Sell it. Sell it. Yeah, yeah I've, I've sold a few paintings. So one of my favorite paintings that I sold, I wish I would have never sold. It was a, a multi-media uh, piece that I did, a collaborative that I did with my wife. And we, I, had, I photocopied money. I dyed, <laughs> I dyed the paper yeah. of really uh, pukey, a dead, uh, like cool. disgusting green. Yeah. I plastered the painting, the bottom of the painting with all of this money um, and it, it looked sick. And then we splashed blood all over it and my wife painted hands and chains over the top <laughs> of it. And then we put news clippings of human trafficking and oh, stuff wow. like that. Okay. And that was a painting that was just a big, like, this is the sickest thing in our society. Here we go. Wow. So we sold that one. You should open a church in Claremont. That's going to be the next one. Let's, let's see some more. 
uh, that's part of the nail wound yeah. series. Yes. Those are the hand wounds. Hands and, and feet. Feet wounds. Yeah. Um, again, another big piece. Um, you know, I have the blood there, but I also have uh, I like splashed the... gold because it's glorious. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like there's beauty in the suffering. Yeah. That's the suffering that brought I like, me alive. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Now, I, when you sent this to me, I'm intrigued by this. <laughs> Tell me about this. Um, that reminded me of, of a voice. That's a, just a kind of like a crazy megaphone. megaphone yeah. That uh, of just a, a voice crying out in the wilderness. I took somebody's Bible. They left at church. They never claimed it and <laughs> chopped it, it up. down. <laughs> and I took a razor blade to it. And um, I right, actually well, okay, uh, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's the whole thing up, and and I have I have all those uh, clippings oh in a in a little jar, and I take them out and apply them to paintings from oh, time deep. to time. That, that's... Notice that um, it's dark. It's not um, yeah. glorious, uh, and it's basically what's what's the texture? Uh, that is all. So that is on a piece of cardboard. Uh huh. And like when I mean cardboard, I mean like a particle board. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and uh, the texture is drywall mud. Okay. And I used a spatula and then I used a, a, a paper clip. Okay. <laughs> I used a paper clip. And then I took uh, rags and smeared okay. um, the back and then I painted the megaphone over the top. Okay. And what's the um, what's the color of the paint? Um, acrylic. It's all acrylic. Okay. And then what I did is I sealed it with a shiny sealer. Oh, okay. So I painted a sealer over the like brushed okay. a sealer over the top of it. Mm -hmm. Basically, I took a, a water soluble urethane. Uh huh. And I um, thinned it with water. Okay. And then I just sealed the painting with that. It's a small piece. This that piece is really only this big. Yeah. I, I painted mm. it for I don't know, on a whim. I was in the office one day and I was bored. And I said, I'm gonna make this piece of art. So so especially the ones you've showed us are a clear expression of your faith. Uh-huh. And of your faith journey. Yeah. And um and what you are influenced by. Yeah. Um, does that, is, would you say that you do pieces that are always reflective, for the most part, reflective Gen of your faith journey? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I w the tattoo pieces are probably my ones that are the farthest outside of a faith motif, yeah. but if you look at them, they're really a faith motif. Okay. Like they're like, most of people are like, oh, it's a cool peacock, but. Okay. That was a Christian symbol. Wow. That's awesome. Cool. Let's go to the next and one. And you know what else is a Christian symbol that I just, I love, is pelicans. I knew that, yes. You knew that. I did. I did not know that. Yeah. Because a pelican will, um, it, to feed its young if there is a, a food so shortage, in order to feed its young, will feed its, feed its, young, its own blood, cannibalize itself for the sake of the children wow. and for the sacrifice they will give and they will they will literally bleed to death for their children. Wow. No, for it's their time offspring. for a pelican neck right. tattoo, right. Pastor Josh. <laughs> there you go, right? Like, Ooh, ah. <laughs> so so I think this is I think these are all your pieces that we have. Is that to show. Is all of them? Yeah, that's okay. all of them. Sweet. Okay. Uh, there there was uh, the back wounds too. There was a what? There was a piece on the back wounds that uh, that I sent the flogging. I don't think I saw yeah. that. I don't know that I I don't know that we got okay. that, but that's right. there as well. Yeah, yeah, the flogging. Okay, is that's there. part of the series. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I, if, I don't I know if we've, a we've sent that. Number of human hearts that were. Oh, oh yeah, heart. that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I did see the heart. I did sell that I'm one. So, did you? I'm so sorry that we didn't get that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that one was beautiful. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, we'll post it up in post credits. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but do that, do that in post. Perfect. Let's get those. Together. All right, let's. You want to do so it? So on this one, um, what we do, We're and I do a little prophetic. We have prophet oh, for you. We have a prophetic you. word for you. Both you of do? us do. Yeah. But it's what we do is we um, we we go into a, I just we just pray and and we we look at artists that people know, 
and are well-known artists usually. And I ask the Lord, you know, we ask the Lord, what word do you have to say? Uh, so I chose uh, one from Henri Matisse. Yeah. <laughs> this is a piece from Matisse. <laughs> and um, the reason why I was drawn to that is because you have shared with me your, uh, you use your multimedia. You yes. use all kinds of media. He, these are collages. Yes. This is a collage. Uh, I like it. And um, this, this, this piece is relatively famous, and it's called The Sorrow of the King. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, the name of that uh, affected me because, first of all, as far as Jesus is concerned, a man of sorrows, mm -hmm. acquainted with grief. And the interesting thing about this painting, and I'll get to the prophetic word, is that it has, it, it has a sad title, a mournful title, except of all the color, the textures, the flowers are apart from that. And to me, it is saying that Jesus is the man of sorrows to bring us this life and to bring us this joy. Mm. It's a joyous painting to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. It is a joyous painting. So the word is this, that I, as I receive that, you, as, as we have visited, I think the prophetic word I have from the Lord for you is continue to use all the textures. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage, first of all, God is blessed by all the textures in, in your life, and in, in your textures are your writing, your art, your yeah. preaching, your praying, your music. God is pleased. Thank you. Thank you so much. With the textures mm. that you are bringing to the kingdom. Thank you. The texture of praise, the texture of worship, the texture of darkness in the sense that it represents the truth of the world. Mm -hmm. But all around is life. And God is saying, continue to apply to, to my masterpiece of the church, joy mm. and the life-giving um, textures of who I am. Thank you. Thus saith the Lord, I am very well pleased Thank you. with you, Rob. Mm. I am so pleased with you. Thank you. That really ministers to me. Thank so you. appreciate uh, that. I want to add on to yours a little bit too. It's the, you know, the different elements in it, the different textures, as you would say. And that Rob is probably one of the most, he's probably the only Renaissance pastor that I know of. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. So you're a true Renaissance pastor. Thank yeah. you. And that, I, that says it to me because it's so many different things going on, so many different colors, and you're able to balance all of those. Thank you. Uh, most look at can. the look at the guy, the one on the far yeah. left hand. That, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, you. Yeah. that's you. That's yeah, you. That's yeah. you. Such a beautiful piece. Thank you so yeah. much. All right. Well, mine's not as pretty, <laughs> but I like that. Okay. So this is an abstract expression. Yes. His was a modern. Mine's an yeah. abstract. Um, and this is the artist's name is Motherwell. And. I've seen that piece before. Have you seen yeah, it? It's one of my favorites. It's awesome. See? See? All right. So I picked this for you. And, <laughs> and the, okay, so it feels like you <laughs> in that it's punk. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's also black and white. Yeah. So you're definitely, you're definitely <laughs> punk, right? You're, you're my punk pastor. <laughs> I love it. But you're also very black and white and you have a very strong sense of justice. Thank you. And things that are right. And the things that are wrong. And the other thing about Motherwell that I think is probably prophetic for you is that he was this revolutionary leader in the abstract expressionist movement, which mm -hmm. I think you're going to be. You're going to be Absolutely. a revolutionary. And that, well, we need pastors like you that are going to push the envelope, going to push the church into some fresh expressions of what worship ought to be. And that we're not boxed in, and 
you know, Motherwell's famous. Yeah, I mean, he's probably not as famous as like Rothko or Pollock, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, I think that that you will be a pioneering, but I also think that you're going to be a Pollock. Wow. So, I wow. and you're and gonna be pioneering. But that's absolutely be, true. But like, you're but there's yeah. yeah. It's just like he did something nobody else did. You're doing yeah. something. And you, we, you mentioned earlier, finding your artistic voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there will be no one like you. Right. But so not only are, are, are pastors and leaders, not only are they going to draft off of you, but you will, you'll still stand apart. Thank you. Um, Wow, that's, yeah. that's so common. So I mean, Thank you know, you Paul so could not have done it without Motherwell, right? I right. Mean, he couldn't. That's he, right. Like, he wouldn't have moved there because, right. like, Motherwell was just like. Yeah. But um, you're you're gonna get it out there, but you're also going to be this, the standard, but in essence, also kind of still this the iconic star. Thank you. I, I agree. In whatever. I agree. Thank, thank you so this much. This new expression yeah. of the new church and what that's going to be and it has to be a new creative and expression. it's and and the other thing as i just so appreciate about about you as all our artists is you're so jesus centered yeah i wouldn't talk to you if you weren't jesus centered. <laughs> I, I i just wouldn't that unless you, you're trying to evangelize uh, me. unless i'm trying to evangelize you i would but i'm what i mean is is that yeah, thank you so is much. i like i like the the creation that you are and that I, I love the reflection of Jesus in you. Thank you. I Pastor love that. Joel. I yeah. love that. Thank you, Pastor Josh, Pastor Joel. That well, it's been a fun day. Super yeah. encouraging. Likewise. Really, really was. It's been fun. All right, so a couple of things. Yeah. Refuge Church in Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I encourage you all to go out and visit an amazing, amazing creative expression of worship. And then you are also now working for Wagner School of... I, I work for Wagner University. Wagner University. Yep. And, and that's uh, a new position for you. What do yeah, you do there? Yeah, brand new. I'm uh, the dean of undergraduate studies. Nice. And uh, you know, building actively building a school of ministry just to honor Dr. Wagner, Dr. C. Peter Wagner. His um, philosophy of Christian education was always yeah. accessibility. Yeah. Awesome. So this school of ministry is religiously accredited, um, wow. but it, it really serves because I am a local church pastor like you brothers, yeah. I, I want to uh, put people through this program that's actually useful to us. Um, so it, the program's built by empowering, equipping, releasing, yeah. um, and to be safe ministers in our, yeah. in our houses. So that's what I'm currently working on. I really like that position. And, that's awesome. And, and I also have uh, two schools, K through 12 All schools, right. a Learn at Home and a on campus. That's so cool. All right, so if you are seeking to go into ministry, so, oh, I'm going to say it. Sorry, Joel. But probably want to skip the seminary, maybe. Yeah. And do some practical ministry. I don't know. Oh, I just made Joel I, mad. I, I, <laughs> no, it's all right. Okay. I, I, you could go to Fuller. Fuller's awesome. Yeah, Fuller's awesome. Um, yeah, there is. But maybe, maybe uh, higher education, well, Wagner's considered higher education, though. It it the graduate programs are. Yeah. All right. Um, the undergraduate programs are not. Um, there we have a relationship with Shiloh University. Okay. Um, so if you want to go the accredited route, they're a great seminary, mm -hmm. and they we plug and play some Wagner classes into that Sweet. Shiloh. Awesome. But um, I'm a firm believer in higher education. I. I it's heartbreaking to me that there are pastors that have never been to seminary, and I'll tell you why. Mm. They have no historical context. Yeah. They've never been taught hermeneutics. Yeah. Um, they haven't been exposed to a wider realm of systematic theologies that exist in the brand of Christianity. And yeah. a lot of times, um, self-taught pastors are very dogmatic on the positions they've accepted yeah. and not open to more ecumenical um, vision of the, of the wider church. No church history context. Where did uh, even a Protestant come yeah, from? Yeah. So, um, no patristics. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. And no Greek philosophy. No. I mean, no, no Hebrew. Classics, yeah. no, no language. Hebrew, yeah. No, no Greek. Uh, yeah. 
I, I, I'm a firm believer if there's somebody watching this podcast and you're like, man, I really want to be a pastor, find a great, well-balanced seminary. Okay. So I, 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 I correct myself. I should not have bashed seminaries, but it's you're, tough. But the bottom line is, is you know, don't beat yourself up yeah. for it. Yes. The bottom line is you're a learner and you've always been a learner and you're humble about your learning. Oh. And it humbles you, and that's that's. I think good. you know, just being in this town, um, I can't tell you how many PhDs in theology have had come to my church, and they can't even lead a Bible study. That's true. So that's kind of where I'm getting at. Right. It's like they, yeah, you know, they they come out of seminary and they don't have the tools to start a church or even. Well, let me let me say this. Yeah. We need more real pastors yeah. and relational pastors more than anything else. Yes, we do. Seminary, seminary is important. It is important to me, yeah. but it doesn't make you a real pastor. You're correct. Uh, walking, pastor, walking somebody through yeah. the valley of the shadow of death makes you a real right. pastor. That's correct. Uh, Which we were talking about before the, the show started. And the like, balance that like, has to happen. Like, you know, like what do you do when people die? And what yeah. do you do, you know, how do you walk somebody through bereavement. I mean, it's just... Let me, maybe it, God is asking for another reformation in Christian education. I think so. And I think, we, that, I think that's where we true. Where we have both, right? We have yeah. his, both historical context and some skills to handle the Bible. But yeah. really, uh, I, you know, I, I uh, read uh, a post online that um, Mark Chirona, Dr. Mark Chirona posted, and he said, you know, nobody really goes to seminary to learn how to be a disciple. No. And I thought, wow, that, what a... Yeah. What a telling. Yeah. Both are important. They are. Education and community. Yeah. And strengthening the Christian mind. I think we're yeah, all exactly. Part of that. It, it we're in agreement be. with yeah, that. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, thanks, Rob. Thanks, thank Rob. you. Thank you so much. Any 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 Christmas programs coming up? Uh, any, this year, you, you know, the either? calendar's weird this year. Yeah. So we uh, are going to just be. Low liturgy Got it. this year. Low liturgy, uh, family friendly service. All right, sweet. Very big. Nothing big this year. Last year we did a big, huge thing. This right. year we're gonna. All right, but, go visit. Go visit Rob. But visit Granite Creek. Oh. Uh, my whole family comes to Granite Creek for the, the living nativity. Yes. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you have not, we'll talk. Been, we'll, we'll push that. Thank you. You should go. We'll push that. I wouldn't recommend that you guys get your tickets AS now. <laughs> now because it's. <laughs> Like we just opened it up and it's like, oh my gosh. So anyway, awesome. We were gonna yeah. thank you. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. God bless you. Next time. <laughs>